<clears throat> Welcome everyone to day number five of our end game training. Uh, very good to see a lot of people joining in even before we have begun. Uh, Honi Arora, Kapil Wadera, Prathamesh Divekar, Practical Thinking, Gagan Garwal, Abhishek K, Anubhav, Shanks, Kunal Singh, Yash Bharadia, Karan Parik, Ayush Ramteke, Anish Adiga, Ajay Kumar, everyone, Mayur Hegde, Tanuja, Dhanushka, Adera, Prathamesh Divekar. Okay, need to, need to turn down my volume. Alan K. Thomas, Ilam Parthi, Jayant Saha. So guys, how are all of you doing and how do you find these endgame sessions? Do you find them tough? Do you find them easy? Do you feel that the the 22 day course was much easier than this one? What What do you feel? <clears throat> and while while you are writing let me let me pull up the the tactics trainer because as always we are going to begin with tactics uh, and to be sharp before the session begins hi to swayam ubale shahid hussein Pradeep Das, Shutartha Maiti says, I cannot attend the class from 8.30 to 9 because of online classes. Okay, never mind, you can always see them again, that's the point. Pani Verma says excellent, Anubhap says hard, Pankaj Choudhury says hi, okay, hi Pankaj, Siddharth says tough, Gagan Garwal says easy, Abdul Kalam intense, Aditya Naidu says super easy, okay, medium level for Atreya, so for some it's very tough, for some it's very easy, for some it's intense, <clears throat> Vinayak Savan says increases our knowledge and skill. Oni Arora says intermediate but interesting. Okay. That is interesting. Uh, Mayur Gondalekar says of course 22 day course was easier. This is after all end game training. It will be intense. Rishila says very useful. Okay. Neev says interesting. Sumit says, of course, 22 day session was much easier than these end games. Uh, they contain very small differences which need to be remembered. Yes, I agree that here there is more of memory work also to be done. I remember the incident when I was at this uh, Anand's training. Uh, it was called Champions, uh, it was in Pune champ coach yeah champ coach by anand and he started teaching end games and you know a position came up and anand says in this position this move wins but don't ask me why it will take me a lot of time back then i had actually figured out how it wins but now to actually again try and figure it out will take me some time and that's when i realized that actually end game play is not just about remembering everything which would be very good if you can but it's very difficult but the other thing is knowing about a position even if you know that so and so position is winning it is good enough to find it over the board like for example you remember my uh, yesterday's uh, example which was this one um, yeah this this position if you remember we were talking about it oh, sorry yeah we were talking about this very position 
and if you know that pushing the pawn on h5 already leads to a draw then you would be more careful about it during the game it need not be that you know everything if you know everything great you know then then that nothing better than that like for example if you know going in then checking then coming back putting him in a zug zwang then going to g5 king h5 coming out from here great so there are i would say different classes of players some who who know everything those would be really strong some who know what is the evaluation and then they figure it out on the board and i think many of the strong players function that way but it's not like they don't learn they learn everything but then the memory has certain uh, limitations and so they keep these assessments in mind and this is my idea with this sessions to actually tell you how to win and all of it but also to give you an idea that yes this is winning let me not push my pawn here to h5 that will just spoil the game okay <clears throat> prashant kumar says the training which you are doing will be very useful to many chess players to improve their game thank you uh, ragwesh dandapani says great work by you during this lockdown spending time for us thanks so much ragwesh uh this is hard i am going to try being like you and write small notes to read after each revision soham shirode good show soham i think revising it is very very essential okay so let's go to the puzzles yeah let's try to solve some tactics and uh, you remember we were we had crossed 2600 yesterday so maybe we can start our journey towards 2700 now but one move at a time yeah the best move not one move but at least try and solve it to the best of our ability uh this one is white to move seems like they started off with a very tough one for us you know they don't, they don't want us to to keep moving forward Chess HQ says thanks for being my favorite channel. Wonderful. Honi Arora, if you are still two four five zero in tactics and still a shooting star, that's because you have to solve more positions. It also depends on how many positions you solve. Rook D eight is the suggestion. Okay, rook d8, queen d8. You you actually see a piece that is can be taken and you take it, but then you need a follow up. First move could be bishop into b7. That's what Shank says. Well, Shanks, Bishop B7. I see your point. If I take on B7, you will take on E5. But what if I play uh, Bishop into B2? Does that make any sense there? Bishop B2. Practical thinking says Bishop C6, B6, Bishop E5. Okay. Uh, and then if I play D5, you play Rook D8. Okay. Bishop C6. If I play Queen C6, what's happening? <laughs> Pratamesh Divekar is right now watching his school session as well as Zoom uh, on Zoom and this. Well, I would say focus on one and come back to the other later. If your school sessions are being recorded, better to come back to it later. If not, well, attend the school and check out this later. so i don't have a very <clears throat> firm answer from everyone everyone has a different answer some say bishop c6 some say bishop e6 some say take on b7 but for everything i would like you to give me a reason as to why this move is made for example bishop c6 mm, looks very interesting because b into c6 means bishop e5 
you can't take d5 because of rook d8 check and the rook is defended by the queen on d3 somehow through the x-ray bishop c6 if queen e7 i was thinking rook e8 looks pretty strong if bishop c6 queen d8 a uh, queen c7 sorry then bishop into e5 again looks pretty good so maybe bishop c6 works yes or not ah uh, shri kumar says bishop e5 d5 bb7 i don't like it so much um, because okay queen d3 cd3 king d7 rook d8 and you are already a pawn down right now so you just recover the pawn doesn't look great yeah so bishop c6 queen c6 bishop e5 rook d7 bishop f6 this is a suggestion and if i play queen c7 i think you can take on g6 and somehow black is all tied up so let's go with bishop c6 i think looks good uh, ilam parthi and rishila both have men mentioned it uh evgeny slutskar if you take on d8 queen d8 queen b5 i can just defend it somehow i mean anyway the b7 pawn is defended so there is no mate there yeah bishop takes here and now we take on e5 and de rook d8 that seems winning i guess take on d7 that looks good yeah good job guys good job that was really good bishop c6 was very strong move uh, and you found it very good even rehan chess says the same good okay uh, ansh bhargav if queen e7 i thought rook e8 was winning after bishop c6 okay here's another one this looks pretty easy very easy it seems for all of you now that you are so good at tactics i would say this one's not too tough white to move queen h5 here i was thinking if f6 jayan saha so always look at opponent's possibilities queen h5 f6 somehow there is no mate but yes uh sumit bishop e6 in the last position i was thinking what if queen e6 and somehow the queen defends the d6 pawn and e5 bishop so bringing it to c6 is much better than to e6 yeah here i would say queen h5 beginning with queen h5 may not be the best idea because f6 if you go queen h5 then black can go f6 and then a check would mean the king can run away but if we begin with something else yes as all of you rightly point out i think few of you who say this are uh, tarun uh, sorry not tarun says rook h8 i don't like that move jan deril batula bhola das aditya anand uh, another move which is suggested is rook h8 king h8 queen h5 king g8 knight g5 but then bishop f5 just defends h7 it seems also queen into d3 so uh, sorry not queen bishop f5 there's a bishop on f1 so can't give the queen but bishop f5 and looks good so let's begin with knight f6 <clears throat> has to be taken otherwise you lose the queen and now there is no way to stop mate and yes this was a check which i had noticed i hope you too had noticed it but uh, i just thought you can take it right do you need to take it because if king takes uh, f2 there is no check after that queen c5 can be met with d4 looks like good to take yeah i mean i don't see any problems ah bishop h3 i didn't i didn't even think about this 
But what if I just take rook h3? Of course, the only thing is if you are crazy enough to take with the pawn, then you block the h file also, you lose the rook. Um, queen h3 also looks okay. I don't see any trap as such. Rook h3 mean. Yeah. Yeah, Alan, uh, queen h5, f6, knight f6, he takes with the rook, not with the pawn. He'll take with the rook and then the king will come to f7. Okay, let's get to the next position. This one is, once again, white to move. What do you do here? Red Ant says, big fan from Bangladesh. Welcome, Red Ants. Good to know. How do you continue here? Chess in Hindi. Hi. <clears throat> well, there are a few checks here. You can start off with them. Ah, okay. Maybe it's important to give the right check first. If you give the wrong one, maybe you are in trouble. Also, you are an exchange down and a pawn down. Yes, Akash Pranav, Pradeep Das seems... Ah, Irfan Moti is here from Qatar. Irfan, how are you? After a long time uh, seeing you... I guess you, you were very active in the chess scene, but maybe recently a little bit of, uh, of chess, yes? Yes, I think the first move, as you all rightly point out, should start with queen c6, because then the king has to be moved out to d8. Because if you start with queen c8 or queen b8, he goes queen d8, and somehow the king is safer, like queen c6 check, then king e7. But if you go queen c6, king d8, then queen a8, king c7, rook c1 can join in and that should be a should be a mating attack there. Ah, sorry, I can't go queen a8. Sorry, queen c6, king d8. If I go queen a8, then rook into a8. So queen c6, king d8, how do I continue? Uh, this, maybe rook c1? Rook c1 looks okay, right? Queen c6, king d8, queen d5, says Shristi Sanchit. Uh, queen d5, king. Ah, and then you can get the d file opened up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yes, queen a8 is a blunder. I'm sorry. So, queen c6, king d8, queen d5. If king e8, queen c6, king d8, rook d1. Yeah, that should be good. And if queen c6, king d8, queen d5, king c8 or king c7, you go rook c1 and get your rook in. With rook and queen, it should be a very strong attack. So, um, queen c6, king d8, rook c1, uh, is it a forced mate there on c8? That's also interesting because how do you prevent a mate on c8? Maybe rook a8 then you just lose the rook so how do you how do you continue like queen c6 is the correct move i think first move and now the point is should you go rook c1 because ah there is queen a7 check there is queen a7 check so we have to be careful if rook c1 queen a7 check king moves uh, and then maybe king e7 Yeah, let's take on d5 because this, ah, I thought this was just, just winning, yeah, queen into d5. It says wrong answer. I can't believe it, but queen b6, how does queen b6 make any difference, like king e8?
king e8 rook c1 maybe queen b6 king e8 but also queen b6 there is ah you can't go queen c7 because there is e7 so queen b6 may be right yeah yeah everyone thinks queen d5 was right but somehow it didn't accept it um rook c1 queen a7 king h1 king e7 i'm not a big fan of that position i think uh, black looks okay over there so therefore uh ah, rook d1 here also is possible there are so many good moves actually but queen b6 queen b6 looks like the fastest way because queen b6 as ilamparthi points out and also shrutartha maiti subrato biswas is that after queen b6 now ah queen c7 because if king e8 then queen b5 check king d8 queen b8 that was a cute cute point e7 and you win so either he has to take with the king you lose the queen or else you lose the rook on f8 but this was a nice point yeah like being very precise for example i'm sure queen d5 is also good but queen b6 is very precise if the king comes here you have rook c1 check and if a king goes to e8 you go to b5 and king d8 there is mate so these little little checks are actually sometimes we miss i'm just going to confirm if queen d5 was also winning uh yeah it is winning but after rook king c8 rook c1 king b8 you may have to continue this position with taking the rook on a1 and there it was a mate so i think that answer was much better okay let's solve one more uh black to move reminds us of somehow ilamparthi's position yeah in the uh in the king's indian black to move here seems seems straight forward right uh, or no yeah shanks you are right piece up but uh, that one was checkmate so therefore queen b6 was better than queen d5 yes atre i think you are right seems like the right move to me also sairam sampat new patel reema singh pradeep das just go g2 here and it's finish yeah there is nothing much to it because queen h1 cannot be stopped uh, rook b1 i think let's go queen h1 and make a queen doesn't uh and it's a mate okay that was too easy what about this one hmm nice nice position this is i think take take check yeah one yeah i think i got this one maybe it's uh, have to calculate the defense for white but looks like there isn't any I'm just trying to focus better um take take push rook d2 bc2 take take and now i'm threatening check i don't think he has any move there yeah looks good yes suryan sharma you are right um but let's see if white has any defense there or do you think white has no defense ayush ram take says d3 directly well ayush then can i not just play e into d3 uh irfan moti says rook d2 and e3 or you mean rook e2 and d3 it wins a piece but you gave up a rook so basically uh you should be able to get back things 
rook e2, rook e2, d3, rook e1, dc2. This is really a very nice position because after rook e2, rook e2, d3, the rook has to go somewhere to because next move is d into c2. But after d into c2, let's say you go rook d2, d into c2. If you take rook d6, queen d6, there is no way to stop queen d1 and making this queen. So with this rook on b5 is very poorly placed. And after dc2, if uh, rook into c2, then rook d1 and you win the queen. So it all works out wonderfully well uh, here for black. d3 queen d1 okay i didn't i didn't consider this move seriously but it seems like at at worst i can win this and be a pawn up but maybe there is something better um how about take on e2 queen e2 rook d2 Th there looks no defense there yeah Yes, Adiga, uh, Anish Adiga, you are right. Also, Sumeth, you are right. Yeah, let's take this and play Rook D2, right? I mean, there's no way to defend. Okay, last one for the day. Just uh, wanting to close it off on a nice note. Let's see if we can do that. Ah, okay. Check. Okay, this one is a bit tricky. Let's try to focus. Nagaraj says, please explain briefly how to create endgame database of different topics in Chessbase. In general, you create a database and you start adding positions in them. I think um, whatever we are learning here, if you can create a database and start putting those positions in that database, that would already start helping you to create various databases. Rook B7 is suggested by everyone. Interesting suggestions by Ilamparthi, Sanjay Shastri, Sairam Sampat, Neil Patel, Rima Singh. Very good. Amai Kanetkar, Shrishti Chede says Queen H7. Well, Shrishti, um, I was a little bit worried about Queen F7 maybe after Queen H7 doesn't look like it's finishing but rook b7 king b7 queen b4 if king a7 you have queen b6 check king a8 knight c7 if king a8 you have knight c7 check if king c8 i think uh, best would be to take queen into f8 check and then play that position i think you have one yes Yes, Sarvanan and Nandan, very good. Rook b7 is the correct answer. Well done. You are absolutely right. So take, take, check. And now king c8. Is there a better move than queen f8? Or should we go for queen f8? Yeah, I guess we should take. I don't see another move here. And that's one. Okay, wonderful. So that ends our tactics for the day. I think we did well. There was only one position which we missed. Queen into d5. Otherwise, we, we did pretty well. Queen b6 check was the better move. And yeah, we gained around 11 ELO points. That's like a good tournament. You know, you go to a tournament at an ELO of 2600. 03 and then gain 11 points 
uh, that's a happy feeling okay so just to revise what we have done until now we have done queen versus pawns i should mention it at the top so that uh, it is in our memory queen versus pawn and then we went on to bishop end games if you remember with pawns on seventh rank and then we went to rook versus bishop and today i want to just finish up the rook versus bishop subject because there were two positions which i wanted to share with you and then we move on to some pawn end games you know basic pawn end games today uh let me just pull up this position that you have in front of you and uh, i would like you to tell me that according to you what is the assessment of this position does white win this or does can black hold a draw in this position you know we discussed a lot about white side having one pawn extra like the rook plus one pawn against a bishop and surprisingly we saw the rook pawn and the bishop pawn have drawing tendencies now we move to more pawns like rook versus bishop and two pawns each and uh, you need to tell me if this position is winning for white or a draw gagan garwal says thumbnail story uh, can anyone guess from the thumbnail which town is it which town uh, which city am i in actually it's very difficult to guess because there's so many cities but if someone can guess it right i would be very very surprised and impressed ilam parthi says draw abhishek says white wins divya hl says white can win suryansh verma draw sangeeta patak draw okay arun dikshit says this position is 1 0 Chess with Arun says yesterday there was 300 subscribers today it changes to 310 subscribers keep it up yes actually chess base india subscribers are growing really quick in this period uh, i remember when i started the training with uh, imbalances we had close to 280 or some subscribers now we have 30000 more subscribers so uh, they are growing pretty quickly uh, i hope that we can you know cross 500k by year end that's the that's the hope but maybe we could do it faster who knows irfan moti says 5544535433 and 7544 was very useful very good irfan i'm glad it was useful for you uh okay many of you think white wins here but the the truth is that this is a theoretically drawn position but theoretical draw doesn't necessarily mean that white cannot try here you know the the main uh, ah okay i did ask you which place was it and i forgot to to see some of the answers uh someone said it was mumbai someone said wellington island uh nishad nsd sangeeta pathak said mumbai well uh, sarvanan says london well the answer is actually istanbul and uh, this istanbul uh, amruta and i visited 2019 no 2018 yes uh, two years ago and uh, we went to world jewels which was in uh, in a city near istanbul we completed it and then our next tournament was the olympiad uh, in uh, batumi and there there was a time frame in between so we decided we'll go to istanbul uh, and the city was just amazing you know uh, there is this uh, river right in the middle of the city lot of boat cruises but then there is this bridge which takes you to the other side of istanbul uh, and uh, you can climb up 
the hill and it has both the flavor of europe and asia somehow you you feel like in one part you are in asia suddenly you you cross a bridge and you go to the other and you suddenly feel like you are in a european town uh, i think istanbul is really nice uh, if anyone has been there you would know that corn and something known as kestanes these are very famous i think they are uh, like these water chestnuts uh, every time i think about them i feel like going to istanbul uh, it was a very nice well some someone said istanbul already but maybe it was after i said okay uh, so no no manju it's not country country is turkey istanbul is a city yes bosphorus river correct kimaya so in this position uh, <clears throat> the main thing is that the pawns are on the opposite color of the bishop and this really helps because the pawns control the light squares the bishop controls the dark squares and somehow this king cannot really enter into the position if you give a check i come up and the king wants to really get in but it is unable to get inside that doesn't mean that this position is a draw because you know white can try for example white can play h4 and now black must be careful uh, for example bishop a1 is the move to draw this position rook b4 now king g7 because white's only logical attempt in this position is to play g4 if he doesn't do that there is no way to break so he plays rook b4 you go king g7 he goes g4 you take take and now comes this uh, nice move which is king h6 well in general if the voice uh, and video are not in sync just refresh the video and it should be it should work rook g5 if king f7 then king h5 and you pick up this pawn we know that bishop versus rook in a normal situation is a draw rook g5 bishop e d4 king f7 bishop f2 and king h5 and a draw uh pravina mahatre points out that maybe white can try to go h3 g4 plan that is true pravina but imagine i do nothing with black okay and now it's your move again you play g4 i take i take now again i do nothing yeah maybe i just keep moving the bishop you know bishop a1 bishop c3 what do you do like in this position what is your winning plan because the moment you try to get your king to let's say from here to f4 i will give you a check so you can't go to g5 and then you come to e5 shashank aswat has contributed 20 dollars today shashank thank you so much he says unfortunately research has got hectic and i haven't been able to come here hopefully i can catch up later i don't know if you have decided where contributions will go i will email you how i would like this to be used wonderful okay shashank that would be nice Uh, i always uh, you know we have already uh, co collected for pm cares fund so i was i was thinking maybe if we do collect something should go to the chess community maybe some player who is in need of fund but shashank you can let us know how um, to use it and i would like to tell everyone uh, that shashank is uh, studying in the us he is trying to get if i'm not wrong shashank your phd course you are trying to do phd uh, and he is an expert at music and ac acoustics you know something related to 3d music uh, and uh, if you type his name in google aswat you will get to know more about him so thanks a lot uh, for the contribution really very nice of you okay so yes and in this position uh it's not easy to make progress and the very fact that this pawn is here makes a huge difference you know someone 
might feel like oh let me let me uh, safe make my position safe by playing g5 and then putting my bishop to f4 then they, they would protect each other but no that's not how these end games work if you put this pawn then everything on the other color complex becomes weak that is on the light squares so this pawn is doing a beautiful service of controlling the light squares so you must mustn't push it okay i hope that um, this is clear okay a, if you go g5 again in this position what next now what's your plan you you did push your pawn all the way i'm just going to keep moving my bishop here i don't think you can dominate it that's the problem there is enough space for the bishop on this diagonal at least four squares so how how exactly are you going to shashank says thanks for the introduction you summed up my research very well okay wonderful so my memory apart from chess is also not bad uh, and shashank i will respond to your email i did read it very carefully uh go around use the light squares well here it's very difficult to win yes i hope you are convinced that this is a fortress okay so pravina are you convinced or do you have any other moves to suggest shank says rook f7 f6 yes possible shanks in that position when you go let's say like this then you go rook f7 okay by the way for all those who use chess base in order to make a null move you know uh, i want to just show you uh, one feature in chess base which will help you for all those who have it uh, for all those who don't have it maybe when you some point start getting serious about chess you will have it if you have a chess board like this you go to file and you customize here and you see there are all these different options here which you can have you can customize it with some key like for example delete sound delete text commentary right now delete text commentary has no button attached to it but if i input a key saying alt r then when i press alt r it will delete the commentary okay uh, for example in this position over here if i i want to make only white moves i can put in these null moves do you see this here null moves these are nothing but i press control alt 0 for example you go rook f7 and now i don't want to make a move for black i do control alt 0 there's a null move and then i make another move for white it's useful sometimes to explain certain concepts okay now i shouldn't make a null move because that would mean that uh, i would lose this uh, position but um, can i take this guy is it okay to take it because i feel okay first of all king g7 looks completely okay but what if i take here now gf6 doesn't look good because of king f8 and i think black is okay no problems here um but if king f6 king h7 king f7 and what is this position now let's try to see if the pawn end game knowledge is good because i'm losing this pawn but maybe i can go king h8 and i'll get the opposition is this a draw or a win and very very funnily this is what we are going to learn uh, today a little bit later this is uh, not a draw says everyone yeah king g7 was a draw but this position white wins you know the point is after king h8 king g6 king g8 it's true that i have an opposition but we are going to learn something known as key square okay when we will learn key squares about pawn end games we will learn that for a pawn on the fifth rank the key squares are here you know all of them and the white king is already on a key square 
so he's already winning even though there is an opposition i just play uh king h6 say king h8 g6 king g8 g7 king f7 king h7 and i win yeah Uh, I hope that uh, this was clear to you this end game remember when you have a bishop and this knowledge can be very useful to save certain end games you know uh, let me pull up a position for you so that this becomes very clear okay this one is basically a game that took place in a practical game and it is white to move and i want you to tell me what should white play in this position okay uh, you will reach some position like this and then you will be um the knowledge of what you have learned will be very useful yes you are right uh, one zero was the correct it's a sixth rank so white wins Keshav Tiwari says, can you please explain this exception to the rule? Which exception, Keshav? G4 says, Suryansh, Ilamparthi, Arjun, PR, Rishila. Very good. See, you guys start playing the endgame like GMs. Once you have the knowledge, you make a move really confidently. Uh, Shri Kumar, not H4. Come on. If you play H4, this is exactly what we learned right now. H5. Siddharth, that's not how it works. But as Irfan, Mayur, Reshma, Shanks, Sanchit, everyone points out very well, G4 is the right move. Very good. And the point is you are preventing H5. And somehow this space is very important for the king always. We'll see how not being able to push his pawn affects uh, black so let's say bishop f2 trying to stop h4 and you know his point is if you go here i will anyway give you a check so right now i have nothing to worry but now comes g5 fixing the pawns uh, then bishop d4 by the way if you are there is a possibility that if you just wait then black can go bishop h4 with the idea of h6 this is something that you really don't want because uh, somehow this bishop controls the important square. It keeps these pawns under check and this pawn as we know on the other color controls the important squares on the light squares. So overall you have a nice formation here and to actually uh, somehow make some progress here is not at all going to be easy. Yes, you will somehow manage h4 but then h5 g5 and once again this position is a uh, i think it's a draw yeah because you are successfully able to push your pawn to h5 and this is a draw so uh, again you know as white you have to be careful because after g4 you might think, okay, bishop f2, let me, you know, play play a little slow, but g5 is important. And then he goes bishop d4, stopping king f6 ideas, h4, bishop c3. And now uh, the right way to, to win this position is to engineer the h5 break. So I would say the, the a good plan could be to get your king like this but you have to be careful for uh, not losing your pawn on h4 so it has to be somehow engineered and actually white goes for the way to do this is h5 gh king f5 bishop c3 rook h4 king g7 rook h5 and this position is actually winning for white uh, it may not be very easy to convert this 
maybe you move around a bit, check, and then at the right moment, uh, you give this check. And now, if he if he tries to defend this, then rook c7. Uh, sorry, I need to prevent this check. But anyway, it seems like I can go rook a7 or king f7, and then I can check. So this doesn't work. So king f8, and I take this pawn. And as you know, the knight pawn is just winning. Yeah, g8 queen and wins. So, you know, it's very important to know the winning plan. The winning plan is to put your pawn here and then play h4, h5 and then bring your king and somehow round up this pawn on h5. Then come out again, then try to check. Uh, push the king back, try to bring your king to uh, f6 at some point. You see here, uh, after in this position, I could somehow dominate the bishop. He, he couldn't come to a diagonal to stop king f6 and it will require a bit of moving around, but it will work. And when you are able to do that, you will win a pawn and you will win the game. So. Yeah, king f7 is, is mating. You are right, uh, Arun. Okay, so I hope that this endgame with two pawns is clear. Uh, let's move on to the last example of bishop versus rook because I think that would mean we have covered almost everything. Uh, and this is something which... Actually, I encountered once in my practice as well. So it's not very uncommon. Uh, I'll just show you the game and I'll show you what is the difference here. So I was playing against Dinesh Bhandarkar, who is a good player from Mumbai. Uh, and I was black. And I played the Sicilian uh, dragon, accelerated dragon. I got this position. By the way, this is... Uh, one of my very favorite positions because you know black equalizes without much difficulties and somehow it was completely fine you know this position and then he went for this queen exchange here which gave up which very lost an exchange and this should be a draw you know these two pawns are really strong but he didn't really play so well you know um, I don't know why he did not take here and then rook d4, maybe f3 and play that position. But he went and gave up another exchange, which wasn't a great idea. And then I decided that, okay, these two bishops and pawns are pretty strong. So I will play this. And I reached this position with three versus three. And I want you to tell me, what do you think? Three versus three. Is this a draw or do you think black can win this? Nupur Sancheti says, I defeated I am Dorsa Derakshani in 14 moves. Would like to share. Okay, Nupur, you can send this game on my email, chessbaseindia at gmail.com and we should check that tomorrow maybe. What do you think? Is this position winning? Win, win, yes. Shang says win. Jayant Saha says win. You know, one of the things that is not going in in uh, White's favor is that somehow he has the wrong bishop. Because his pawns are also on dark squares. His bishop is also on dark squares. And as we have already seen, if the pawn and the bishop are on opposite colors, they can control more squares. Here, my king will have actually a free access to all the light squares in this position. So, Tanuja says draw, Akash Pranav says draw, Sangeeta Pathak says draw, but rest everyone says it's a win. Uh, and uh, yes, this one is, is actually winning. Uh, and my opponent made it easier. He played g4, which is logical. You know, he wants to put the pawns 
on the opposite color of his bishop but maybe it was better to just play h4 and stand still uh, the way i would win then is try to get my king slowly into the position put it here on e2 which i think is easily possible and then uh, i would try to create threats against the bishop to win and uh, to to go into a pawn end game and then if that doesn't work i would go say f6 h6 g5 slowly start pushing the pawns uh, then take take one pair of pawns play f5 f4 and then f3 and eventually win that position you know it's going to take some time but i think uh, it is quite easy to win black, black uh, white has no co counterplay in the position but g4 wasn't so good because now i brought my king in and uh, as planned you know uh, i could get it behind and came to e2 and f5 this was already the idea as i had suggested you want to play f4 play f3 play rook g7 push the king out and win and he resigned this game because he see, he saw no real way to to continue uh, and um, yeah so this was a pretty easy win for me but i want to show you the most theoretical end game because you know there was a possibility here that he would not push his pawn you know this knowledge could have been useful to actually keep the bishops here not push the pawn so if i take take and take this position i think it has much better chances for white of course this is also winning for black but it will be much more difficult for me to win here the plan would be to actually go around with the king on dark squares and to come to e1 and then attack the f2 pawn so what white usually will do is he will say okay you are coming here right with your with your king so i'll move my bishop i will put my pawn on f4 and h4 and i will sit there and then i, I will hope that your king coming to e1 makes no real difference because my pawns are controlling dark squares my bishop is controlling light squares okay this is how you can understand this position so in a way i think uh, h4 makes a lot of sense here preventing g5 in this position and uh, later on let's say if the king starts moving out white could even go and just play f4 here okay and then uh, the ball is in black court how to win and i would say there are two ways to win one is that because the pawns are still flexible i can play uh, h6 f6 get my rook back here improve my king let's say to e3 and try for g5 i think uh, that could be one way to play uh, although i'm not very certain like because if take 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 and then there is just g ah, i i may not take with the the last pawn maybe with the rook but yeah i'm not so sure but the other way to win would be to put your pawns on f5 and h5 as we shall see now so bear with me with all these arrows and uh, i know it's getting a little confusing but this is the position that i am talking about Uh, and it should be very clear to you after this so this is the position which could be reached you know three pawns uh, as black didn't want a weakness on f7 he pushed his pawn here he has pushed h5 and white also pushed his pawns like this so how can you win this uh, how can you win this position so the way to win this is you go and improve your king first okay so you are happy now now black says i'm just going to maintain here of course black shouldn't go here trying to win these pawns because if the king moves in that's game over uh king e6 bishop b2 and now uh rook d3 king g7 rook d2 bishop c3 rook d7 king g8 rook d3 bishop b2 
and now comes the important point of this entire position because how do you play for win as white see what i'm trying to show you here is not all the variations but to actually keep this idea in mind when the pawns are like this and like this and the bishop is on the opposite color how should white win sangeeta patak says i'm bored well sangeeta uh, i can tell you this that when i was very young and i was learning these end games they looked really boring but when i became a stronger player they started looking very interesting so it all depends at which level you are and how you are taking this because this very thing after a while will get interesting for you uh, my only idea with this is to arm you i know that everyone in this class is not at the level to learn these end games but still if you remember something from this it will really help you in future yes by the way amazing this is such a great class uh, Ilam Pati says another way is to fix f5 and h5, bring the rook to e3, king to e3, rook b6. Yes, yes, you are right, Ilam Pati. That's what we are going to see here. Uh, g4. Arshia Das says we have no breakthrough where Arshia. Uh, this is where you have a breakthrough. And by the way, I would like to tell everyone that Arshia uh, is a very talented player from Tripura. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she is around. Eight or nine years old, uh, and one of the best players from Tripura. So very good, Arshia. Welcome to the show. I think maybe the first day, yeah, for you. And yes, all those who says G4, very good. This is the only way to win here, uh, and but it's good enough. So two ways to take. If he takes here, you go H5. If he takes here, then you go king takes here, and now you will kind of clean up these pawns. And we know that f pawn is a win only if you don't push the. In in this case, even if you push it to f6, it should be fine because the bishop is not a light squared bishop. Otherwise, you remember, yeah, that this was a trouble, but not here. So if in case to h5 plays king g6, I don't think you should worry. You should take. And play rook d5, and it is often touch and go. Like it's very close because he can take and play something like this. But white is just in time to win the game. Okay, so also here if you go g3, then rook g5 and king e5 wins. So h g4 loses to. Uh, h5 and then winning the f5 pawn fg4 is a little bit more tough because after take take king here now threatening king g6 so king f7 king g5 i take and he plays g3 so he preserves his pawn but uh, it doesn't really work because i come here i start pushing my pawn and then uh, slowly and steadily i get my rook to g6 so the pawn is under control uh, and of course g2 is is just losing the pawn but what else could you do like for example if you play bishop b8 i have rook b6 and actually i dominate the bishop that's the problem uh, because the pawn is on g3 the bishop has only one two three four five squares two are controlled by the king i can go to b6 and control this and this square and c7 somehow loses tactically to this uh, skewer so somehow the bishop will be dominated so he has to play g2 and you lose the pawn uh, and uh, we remember that this position you already have a pawn on h5 so it should be a draw right can anyone tell me it should be a draw why am i saying it's winning
वेलकम टू नवीरथ नवी एंड टॉम लास्कर यस यू आर लेट बट डजेंट मैटर यू कैन वॉच दिस अगेन can anyone tell me what is different from what we learned yesterday in this position yes shanks very good bishop is wrong color the point is if i had a light squared bishop it's a draw but there is a dark squared bishop and that is the reason why well uh, mayur no not really the king is not outside because even in that position i could always bring my king out that was never an issue the issue was that the bishop was always controlling these key squares here on g6 but now this bishop cannot it's a wrong color bishop you should always remember the right bishop as the going into the corner and can sit nicely with the king both of them together that's the right color bishop but if they both are fighting for this corner square it's a wrong color bishop okay very good now rook g6 bd2 rook a6 h6 and this is a nice move uh, actually if uh, the pawn is taken i can give a check and as we have seen yesterday king goes here king goes to g7 and when the king is boxed in like this on the f file you know like this box it's winning for the rook so it's okay to give up the pawn he doesn't take it uh, never mind he he must take it because if he plays like this uh, then at some point i will anyway force you to take and now a check this is a nice move because if you come up there is a attack on the bishop and you lose it otherwise you go back and we already know <laughs> that king goes to f7 then attacks the bishop and it's checkmate you know so the wrong color bishop creates all the issues here and now we have boxed in the king once again on the bishop's file basically remember the bishop's file if we can box in the king like this it's winning bd2 and you win the bishop yeah yeah exactly practical thinking you are right absolutely so i hope that bishop versus rook is clear um, it was a tough section i agree but you have so many ideas let's try to just quickly recap and write it down here because if we can remember these things uh, then it will make it easier yes so bishop versus rook uh, both sides have two pawns this is a draw only if the bishop it only if the defender can place both his pawns on opposite color of his bishop and also have space that means that he must be able to play h5 you know this what we learned over there not on h7 g6 but h5 and the last point here which we learned is 3 versus 3 is always a win for the rook okay 3 uh, versus 3 is always uh, i always am a little bit worried about the word always but um, i can say i can use it here maybe there are no real exceptions as such i mean there could be something really bad but uh, here is always a win for the rook of course you must remember you must remember the g4 breakthrough you know this one is very important to be remembered and if you do that you will be able to win your games okay now today moving on to something more interesting perhaps uh Mo moving on to something more interesting or you can say much more easy 
then what we have learned is some pawn end games because i think you should know a lot about it if you do not know then it's the right way to start end game so this is one position which i want you to know Arun Dikshit says this is amazing work all these rules about end game looks extremely interesting well if i can just ignite the love in you for end games that is good enough i remember i took two end game training sessions when i was very young like around 14 or 15 years old from one was from dv prasad i am dv prasad and another one was from imp konguel and both these sessions i remember i guess not much from it because i was very young but they ignited me the love of end games i actually learned oh end games can be studied so systematically can be learned like this and that's how it helps you know today maybe you won't remember everything that we are learning if you if you remember it great you will be very strong player but you will at least learn the method ah okay he's breaking it down first he he saw rook versus bishop no pawns then he put a pawn for the side then he put two pawns then three pawns okay i can study it this way it's not impossible okay so now the question here is is this winning for white or not is this position winning for white or not draw says with any uh, karan says draw okay so the way to learn these end games with pawns is a concept called key squares how many of you know what a key square is here okay if you know this you will be able to solve such positions very easily so i want i don't want you to calculate like you will calculate king d2 king e7 king d3 king d6 king d4 king c6 king c4 what's happening you will say hmm, i don't know then b5 king b6 king b4 king b7 king c5 king c7 b6 king b you will go all the way to stalemate and then say ah okay it's a draw not that way yeah the way you do it is that in this position key squares are nothing but the the squares which you get after leaving one rank okay this one rank if you leave it and the next three squares for the pawn are the key squares and what is the advantage of key squares the advantage or the concept of key squares says if the white king can reach any of these three squares then white wins it's it's as simple as that so let's say i go king d2 you come king e7 i come king d3 king d6 king c4 king c6 and you know these are the key squares i want to get there somehow but the black king says no you cannot come near me white is like oh my god i want to get there but it's not possible so i can say let me just try to improve this position and say instead of pawn being on b4 what i will do is i will put the pawn on b3 now what are the key squares can anyone tell me what are the key squares in this position what are the key squares Yes this position is very famous it's in Doritsky's end game manual but you can find it in so many other books as well uh, which are the squares in this position which are the key squares where if the white king reaches white wins can anyone tell me yes shital you are you are absolutely right about the answer yes a5 b5 c5 says uh paresh babar ya suryan sharma irfan moti it's always leave one rank and the next three squares okay this is how you remember 
these are the key squares so now you will see that if i play king d2 king e7 king d king c3 king d6 king b4 i reach one of the key squares here so he stops me from these two but i am able to reach and once i reach i don't need to worry i will win this position okay so closer the pawn easier it is to reach to the key squares if by that logic i just push my pawn even further behind here what are the key squares now can anyone tell me what are the key squares in this position very simple these end games i think you guys are well versed with i'm very happy so that's why i'm just taking it for the for consolidating your knowledge sometimes you know certain things but when someone repeats it it just becomes more solid so that's the idea himnish babar yeah i'm using my mom's account okay himnish i'll try to remember your name yes a4 b4 c4 says uh, shanks pranav kumar jayant saha reshma dulgaj navirat navi suryansh verma sv sibbi very good all of you who said a4 b4 c4 excellent guys these are the three key squares giving one rank away uh, so if you can get your king here you can see how easy it is now to actually get my king i don't even need to think much but remember don't push your pawn is the moment you push your pawn the key squares go forward for example you play b4 now for example king c6 b4 oh my god that's a horror because now you have pushed the key squares further and your king can't reach there so instead just try to improve your king he goes here and now you play b3 because the key squares are actually now here these three squares and he must give me way if he goes here i will come here if he goes here i will come here and you will see that there is absolutely no way in which you can now stop my pawn from queening i can even push b5 king b6 king a8 uh, and here uh, king c7 might not okay king c7 looks okay but i would rather play it this way oh sorry what did i do king b8 king b6 king here uh, just go here king a7 and push and wins yeah okay so now we come back to our initial position which i had given you here and i ask you how should white win and you will realize that the farthest key square from the king is a6 so instead of trying to run to this square or this square it could be a good idea to go here and so you play king uh, c2 king e7 king b3 king d6 king a4 good move king c4 would be a draw king a4 king here and now king a5 threatening to come to a6 so you try to stop me now with king b7 but i play king b5 getting the opposition once you get the opposition you are now either ready to go to this square on a6 or c6 and you win the game okay so now with this concept in mind just trying to show you the last uh thing here that if the pawn is on the fifth rank like this then the key squares are no, uh, can you tell me what are the key squares here now this is an important point krishan kumar says hello sagar today i missed your class slept late at night what time did you sleep krishna kumar krishan kumar by the way for all those who are thinking what is what are the key squares in this position
Shank says A6, B6, C6. Reshma Dulgat says A7, B7, C7. Well, turns out both of them are right. When the pawn is on the fifth rank, then you don't have just three key squares. Actually, there are six key squares. Okay, remember this. So if my king can reach any of these squares here, he is winning. Of course, if my king reaches to c7, b7 or a7, it is winning because once the king reaches there, you can just start pushing the pawn. <clears throat> but with the king here on b6, for example, I'll just show you, even if black is able to get the opposition, okay, here, of course, black should stop me. Then it's a draw. But even if he goes here and he gets the opposition, this position is lost because my king is on a key square already. And I can push my pawn and win the game. It's simple. So always remember this thing where which I have just mentioned to you. It will make your life in pawn end games very easy. If pawn is on b2, these are the key squares. The pawn moves to b3, these are the key squares. Uh, sorry. If the pawn moves to b4, then these are the key squares. And if the pawn moves to b5, then you have six key squares. Okay. I hope the concept is very clear because now will come a tough position. And then you will tell, ah, the concept which looked easy suddenly is now tough. Okay. So let me see if any of you can find the answer to this one. First, a slightly easy one. Yeah, not a tough one. So this game actually happened between two players and it was, I think, uh, Olympiad and uh, between Allison and Gabriella, Cole Allison and Stansiu Gabriella and black in this position played king to e5, uh, sorry, white to move here, uh, not black, white to move. And you know what white played here? White resigned the game. Do you think her decision was right to resign the game? Ken Akhan says beautifully explained. Well, very good. Uh, Ken, I am happy that you learned something new. Yeah, uh, Amai, that was just for uh, an example that I showed. Uh, of course, you can you can push the pawn. It is not, uh, I just wanted to show you the key square concept. So tell me, is this decision to resign in this game good or bad? Wrong, yes, yes, some people say it's good to resign. Well, you're going to lose the pawn, right? You're going to lose this pawn anyway. For example, even if you play king d4, I'm going to play king f5. I have to move. You come here and you're losing the pawn. There's no way to defend this pawn. Then why do you say that this position is a draw? Remember, as, as Girish Bachikar has rightly pointed out, even after you lose the pawn, you can take the opposition. More importantly here, what is the only move to draw this position? White to move and draw. White to move and draw in this position. What is the only move? Can anyone tell me? Okay, Arshia Das says never resign is not good. Yes, true. I mean, in general, resigning is not a good idea. But my question here was more like if it is winning for black or it's a draw. Yeah. Also, Kalidos Pechi says, no, always give a fight till the end. What's the only move? Yes, everyone who says King C3, Jairaj CD says King D3. No, Jairaj, if you play King D3, I'll take and now I have the opposition. You know what opposition is? Two kings standing opposite each other and if he moves in one direction, I will outflank. 
if he goes in this direction i'll come here again outflanking so that is how uh, this works and in this position as everyone has rightly pointed out the right move is king to c3 because after he takes you take the opposition against the king and you tell him hey look your pawn is here your key squares are these three i am not going to let you come in you go there i will come here you come here i'll come here you go there somehow white wants to make progress a black wants to make progress but he is not allowed and if you push the pawn the key squares go further away and it becomes impossible to control them so that's why it was a wrong decision by alison call to actually resign in this position uh, and all of you are much stronger than scotland's board number 1 right uh, okay moving on here's another example to all of you uh, this one was between the famous game of spielman and duras duras yeah this is a famous game and in this position spielman played rook to f4 question to you is is this a good move or a bad move is this a very good move or a bad move because spielman said to himself uh, if he takes king f4 then this pawn has the key squares here and my king will be on f4 and he cannot come to the key squares what did he miss what did he miss here dev marcia says how were the various rules derived well in general i think when you start doing something which is novel then people want to always systematize it you know they want to put it into blocks which are easily understandable and so the first thing that everyone usually does is try to form some rules patterns and all and this has been going on since maybe couple of centuries even more and so the rules have been created that way yes mayur hegde is right new patel is right arshya das is right this is a very very uh bad decision by spielman to play rook f4 because now comes king g5 attacking the rook and the rook must take and who has the opposition now black has the opposition because it's white to move white has to give way to black and the idea of opposition always is to outflank if you keep continuing this following him there is no use of opposition often you outflank and you have the control of the key square and now you can start pushing your pawn and win the game okay remember to not push the pawn too much in advance for example if he goes here and you push the pawn this would be a bad idea because now the key squares are here and i get the opposition and this is a draw again so therefore the best thing to do here is to take the opposition again king moves to outflank and now when you are very much in control you push the pawn because you already know that here even if he comes here my king has six squares key squares here and i go king d3 and then i push the pawn to a queen okay i hope that uh, this was pretty clear someone asks how to make green arrows on the board well usually if you hold your alt key and move it's a green arrow if you press on a square it's green if you hold control plus alt and press it's a yellow arrow control plus alt and press on a square it's yellow shift plus alt gives a red arrow and if you press on it these are the three colors that happen okay now comes the toughest position of the day maybe this is going to be really um tough for you guys but the one who gives me the full answer i'll be very impressed so white to move black was very happy in this position you know black was like i'm going to come here 
I'm going to take this pawn. I'm going to take this pawn and I'm completely winning because when I take these two pawns, these are the key squares and my king would already be standing on one of the key squares. So he asked white, you know, come on guy, you resign the game. You are losing everything. White said, not so soon, my friend. What did white do here? Shanks says g6 wins. Shanks, how do you win this position? I'll just take and then I'll win your f4 pawn. Prathamesh Divekar, you are absolutely right. Paresh Babaria says King G2, uh, sorry, not Paresh, yeah, or Himnesh. I just. Well, the point is if you play uh, King King G2 here, the, the issue is that I will go King G4. Yes, Ilam Parthi, you are absolutely right. You have given the full line. It just shows you know it very well. Uh, King g4 and now I am threatening to take this pawn. And even if you sacrifice your pawn, the problem now uh, is that even that the... <clears throat> I am going to take this and land on one of the... So you say I will give up another pawn. But then I take with the pawn... And now the key squares are this. Oops, sorry. And But I have the opposition. So if you go here, I come here. And now I will get to one of the key squares and win the game. Okay. So that's the reason why you can't start with king g2. You have to start with the move as was pointed out by several people in the chat who are really experts at endgame, who have read Dwaretsky's endgame manual. I'm so proud of all of you guys that you have done that. And the point is g6. Once you take with the king, that doesn't work because I come up and I can defend the pawn. That's a draw. So you have to take with the pawn. And now if you again do this, then this position is just... It doesn't matter here who has the opposition. Okay, Remember, once you reach the key squares, for example, you go king h2, king g4, king, uh, king g2... Here, yes, white has the opposition, but it doesn't matter because after g5, I will win back the opposition. That's the point of key squares. It doesn't matter who has the opposition. If you are on a key square, you win, no matter what. So here in this position, um, fg6, f5 is very important. You know what you are doing is you are luring the pawn ahead to make the key squares Go further away. Now these are the key squares. Now what is the best move? What is the best move in this position for white? Rahul Bhagwat has contributed 400 rupees saying, May your efforts yield many chess world champions. I salute your dedication. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you so much Rahul. Uh, very kind of you. Uh, and... I always believe in one thing when I teach because most of you here, okay, uh, learn whatever you can. Like for example, you will learn the end games which are simple, but when it comes to complicated end games, that you may not learn it for another few years. And this is what I wanted to do in my sessions that I wanted to give you an idea of how the world of complex end games is. So that you can at least prepare yourself. Okay, that was the idea. But thanks a lot Rahul Bhagwat for your contribution. And now very important is the move King G1. Many of you will say, but King G1 is not even long opposition. Distant opposition is usually because black has the distant opposition. If you see the same color here and with odd number of squares in between. But the point is, I will next go king f1. And you would really love to put your king on the top of your pawn and say, I am winning. It's winning. If you could say, pawn is also on f5, king is also on f5, 
Then next move, if he goes to G2, you come to G4. If he goes to F2, you come to F4. If he goes to E2, you go to E4 and you win. But the rules of chess do not allow one, two pieces on the same square. So you have to go to F4, then I take opposition. If you go to G4, again I take opposition. And that's how the game ends in a draw. Be very careful not to play King G2 here because then King G4 means black has the opposition. And after King F2, King F4, it's black who wins the game because these are the key squares. He will come to one of them. Okay. Right. And now for the homework of the day. And this is if you haven't solved it already, you are in for a treat today. Please solve it well. This is a beautiful study by Somov Nasimo, uh, Evgeny Somov Nasimovich. Uh, if you have solved it already, try to recollect if you remember all the details. This one is white to move and you can see that white is in big trouble. Big, big, big trouble. You know why? Because his knight is pinned here and his knight cannot move. If he somehow manages to defend it, then black has moves like bishop b6 or rook into f2 uh, takes and bishop b6. You know, so many problems for white. So my question to all of you is, how does white save himself? And remember, the solution is going to take your breath away. Uh, all those who haven't uh, solved this already, you are going to love it. You are going to love it. So, Please note down this position. This is your homework. I remember that uh, I used to some when I was um, I think 16, 17, I used to teach at my local club. It was not like I was a teacher there, but whatever I would study in the day, I would go there and start showing to the other students there. And my my point was to revise most of the things that I was learning. And remember, if you are a good teacher, it means that you, whatever you have learned is very clearly in your head most of the times. Um, so if you get an opportunity to teach someone something you know, don't miss it. Don't think, oh, I know it already. What is the point of teaching to that person? Because then he learns it. I don't learn anything. But actually you are always learning when you are teaching. So here... Uh, I went to these sessions in Ghatkopar Chess Academy and I used to show and I gave and I gave this position to everyone to solve. They really enjoyed it. They had a tough time solving it, but uh, they, they did uh, they did enjoy it. The, the study is by Evgeny Somov, S-O-M-O-V, Nasimovich. Krishan Kumar Bagel says, at which time do you sleep at night? Well, uh, the yesterday was not a great day. I mean, I slept really late. I slept at, I think, 1.30 p.m., uh, 1.30 a.m. And woke up at a little late than usual at 5.30. Four hours of sleep is usually bad. Uh, I would say, at least for myself, I would recommend six hours of sleep. Also, uh, I have been on a... On a mission to lose weight um, because you know all this incessant traveling uh, made me gain a lot of weight I, I reached a weight of 80 kgs which is for my height which is somewhere between 5 8 and 5 9 that is a lot uh, I should be close to 70 uh, and uh, so in the last few days and after the lockdown began I have managed to lose 8 kilos uh, which is pretty good considering that I didn't uh, do any diet as such. Uh, but my simple logic is to eat my food early in the morning. At After I end this session, I don't take breakfast. I actually have some kind of a lunch. It's like breakfast plus lunch uh, around 10, 10.30. And then my next meal is at 5 o'clock. Uh, I have my sort of dinner. And that's all, you know, I don't, I don't eat basically too much. I try to stay light. I try to exercise and I think it really will help you. All those who are uh, 
unable to lose weight eat uh, in limit that's very important yeah yes mayur you are right for 70 72 and now i am back to 72 right now my aim is to reach around 68 uh if i can do that that would be nice okay shanks has already solved it uh so jairat says drink lemon and honey with hot water it helps me to lose weight this will help you a lot yeah in general amruta keeps telling me to drink hot water uh anyway drinking hot water i think is good perhaps but i don't believe it helps you to lose your weight what's the logic like you drink hot water and then your calories burn inside something like that uh arshia no class at night we will have class again tomorrow at 8 am go to sleep early in the night so that you can wake up early for the class kalif says how old am i i am 30 years old kimaya says i play cricket in lockdown where do you play cricket and with how many people take care you know Tanisha Bagchandani says, "While the exams are going on, I wake up at 3 a.m. to revise." Okay, amazing. Dhanushka Yappa says, "I'm 30 kgs." Dhanushka, how old are you? Yes, this is white to play, Tanuja. Mayur Gondalekar says, "No honey with hot water." Okay, I believe in Mayur Gondalekar. He is. Uh, he has done a lot of uh, research he has done a lot of things uh, so he knows what's right siddharth malotra hi okay dharun says who is your inspiration um, you know earlier i used to because everyone would ask who's your inspiration who's your inspiration and i used to just say you know sometimes i would say capablanca sometimes i would say anand sometimes i would say fisher but truth be told actually i just get inspired by people who do good uh, and who who are good at different things but i don't really get inspired by a person I get more inspired by what they have achieved or what they have done for i'll give you an example uh um, somewhere around 2 or 3 years ago i i started getting really fascinated by this person called uh, elon musk uh and you you would be knowing him he is one of the uh, biggest entrepreneurs in the world he is the founder of uh, tesla spacex boring you know many many um companies which which are trying to change the world and uh, i read i saw so many of his videos and all and he would always say you need to work hard you need to work really like no need to sleep no need to put uh, you know these things you should be working twice as much as the people who are com- you are competing with and um, <clears throat> i really liked his dedication towards work but what i did not like and when i tried to somehow follow what he was doing was that i lost my health you know i gained weight i lost my health and that's when i realized that okay i should take what is good in him which is dedication and all but i shouldn't kill myself by working so hard uh, all the time because it doesn't work for me maybe it worked for him um so you take the good in everyone that's what even carlson says carlson has this statement which is role models limit you uh, and and i uh, believe it like if you have a role model uh then you are like oh, this is the person whom i want to follow but that guy is not perfect you know he has his limitations so whatever are his limitations become yours so better to pick up good things from everyone for example even if you like something about me very good to take some good things from me but not make me your role model or something because you know i have some bad qualities as well okay Ishwar Chess Channel says my father hates me for playing chess, but I don't care. Well, why does he hate you playing chess? That's an important question to ask. 
Alan Thomas says, I spend my time by playing chess with my grandfather. He's 81 years old. He's very good at blitz. His name is Devasya. Can you give a shout out to him? Of course, 81 years old and playing chess. Wonderful. My, a big shout out to Mr. Devasya. SVCB says, I took a Chessbase account directly from Chessbase and not from Chessbase India for 4000 and I didn't get Chessbase 15. SVCB, you have to take it from Chessbase.in. For Indians, the prices are 60% less. Next time, please do buy it from there. Yeah. Chess informant says, Sagar is GM in philosophy. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know about that. Okay, so yes, all of you who uh, have something else to do can leave. I would say tomorrow's session would again revolve around something more complex in nature uh, and uh, I'll come prepared for it. I hope you to do take some good rest. I wanted to touch upon this pawn end games because these are the sort of building blocks in your end game knowledge, the key square concept. So I just wanted to make sure that it is in your head. How about just uh, writing it down so that we do not forget this, the last thing, because I want really all of you to inculcate this habit of remembering to write down, to summarize what you have learned. So pawn end games, let me just make this a bit smaller so you can see it. Yeah, pawn end games. Uh, the first point is that key squares are three squares after leaving one rank. And this is true for pawns on second, third, fourth ranks. But when the pawn is on fifth rank, then you have six key squares. Okay. I hope that this concept also remains with you. Uh, just to summarize, once you summarize something, it takes you two minutes more. Yeah, it takes you two minutes more to do it. But if you don't do it, next time you have to study it again. And this two minutes that you have used right now will be very useful to you later on. Okay. So thank you all for, for an, uh, attending this class. I will have some interesting news for you tomorrow. Uh, but more about that, we are planning to launch memberships with uh, Chessbase India YouTube channel. And I'll be speaking more about it in the next session. Uh, also, I want to just remind all of you that there is a tournament on 2nd and 9th of May on Play Chess. So if you are planning to play, please do play it. Nigel Short has confirmed his entry on the 2nd for the Checkmate COVID-19 by Kerala Chess. Uh, sorry, by Chess Kerala. Uh, and uh, Sarvanan is also playing there as he mentioned yesterday. So let's meet tomorrow okay take care bye bye and make sure if you haven't subscribed to chess base india you do so uh, someone mentioned that in in just a day we have over 2000 subscribers and that's only because many of you subscribed so thanks a lot for that uh, shubham the homework is the last position yes and today there will be beast unleashed part 2 shri devi rongali yes that's what we will do. Tramp64 says, thank you from Dusseldorf, Germany. Wow. That means you have woken up at 6.20. Right now it's 6.20 in Germany. Amazing. Shriyana, thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, Girish Bachikar, thank you so much. Karan Parik says, subscribed a year ago. Okay, wonderful. See you guys. Take care. Goodbye. And see you soon.